All right, so back again. Um, apparently, I can only record in 10 minute sessions. Anywho, um, yeast infections. So, yeast infections can be found in the throat, and um, if a particular microorganism is not there to control the yeast, then the yeast can get out of control and it can cause what's called thrush. Um, e. coli is going to do the same thing with salmonella and shigella. Uh, e. coli naturally occurs in our bowels and it'll keep salmonella and shigella in check so that we don't get uh, infected. Clostridium difficile is the same way we all we call it C. diff in the hospital. Nasty little bugger. If uh, you take too many antibiotics or have been on them for a long amount of time, such as people that are in the hospital that are very sick, um, it can wipe out a majority of your microorganisms in your gut. And C. diff can uh, overpopulate things, and it's a intense, serious intestinal infection, um, crazy nasty stuff. Um, so we definitely want to keep that in check. So we want to keep the normal flora where it's supposed to. This is a good reason why anytime you ever take uh, antibiotics um, to always either take a probiotic after you've taken your round of antibiotics or you need to eat yogurt that has natural uh, microorganisms living in it to replenish your gut so that it doesn't um, cause more of a problem later. Um, so talking about the relationships, there's different kinds um, of relationships we, that we can have with the normal flora in our body. So symbiosis is when you have two organisms and at least one of them is dependent on the other. That doesn't mean that they both are, but at least one of them is dependent. Um, so it's two organisms working together. Um, not necessarily good, not necessarily bad, but just they're together. Um, so commensalism is where one organism benefits, but the other one is unaffected. Um, so it's um, all right. It just again, one benefits, one is not affected in any way by it. Mutualism is where they both benefit. Um, so I'll get you something if you get me something, kind of idea. Um, whereas parasite or parasitism is where one is actually taking from the other and kills it. So when we think about parasites or things that cause disease in our bodies, that would be the parasitism where we actually suffer from that particular organism benefiting itself. So those are looking at the different um, relationships. Um, so, a lot of your disease causing bacteria are parasites um, that are going to hurt us and not obviously help us. So, we have what's called opportunistic microorganisms, and these are still classified under the symbiotic relationships, um, but depending on what is going on in our body, uh, the relationship can change. So it could have been where the microorganism was benefiting us, but then there can be a problem and it can suddenly change and actually be hurting us. So um, E. coli is naturally occurring in our gut and it helps us produce vitamins, helps us break down um, food so that we can get the most nutrients out of what we eat and consume. But if you put E. coli in a different spot within the body, or if something else is happening that can actually hurt us, so in that sense, it would be changing based on the conditions that are around us. 
And again, these are called opportunistic pathogens or microorganisms. So when they're in their normal habitat, they're fine. They do us no harm. But you put them in a different environment and it causes problems. Um, like I said, E. coli is supposed to live in the gut, helps us break down stuff. But if it gets into the urinary tract, then it becomes a urinary tract infection. Um, if it gets into the lungs, spinal cord wounds, that's going to cause all kinds of different um, infections because E. coli is no longer in its home. It's somewhere else within our body. Um, AIDS is another example. So AIDS kind of destroys our immune system, but you can have some tiny little microorganism that most people would normally be able to fight off, but they can't anymore because AIDS has completely destroyed their immune system. That you can have um, the common cold that's just going to wipe them out because their immune system is so trashed. And so that would be considered an opportunistic pathogen as well. And then we also have cooperation between microorganisms. So um, when we were talking about normal flora, we were kind of talking about the competition because it was, they were trying to rein in and kind of put a handle on microorganisms that, uh, uh, to keep them from overgrowing, but then you also have microorganisms that work together. Um, and then that can also cause us disease too. So not only is it you have a microorganism in you, but you have two microorganisms in there and they're both trying to get at you. Um, so the example that the book gave was that there was two different microorganisms that are in your mouth that can actually cause gingivitis um, based on them working together. So how can opportunistic pathogens cause infection? So like we just said, um, most of the opportunistic pathogens are ones that if they're in their normal environment, their normal little homes, then they're not causing disease. But they get out of their normal environment and then they can cause disease just because they're, they're not where they're supposed to. So obviously our gut, our intestines is not a very clean location. Um, so E. coli running around in there is fine. But our urinary tract is sterile it's completely clean so you get that microorganism in there and it's going to cause all kinds of problems um so again it's just it's out of its normal habitat and that's why it can cause infection um or because your immune system is trashed a small little microorganism can cause infection that way too um so let's look at the etiology of infectious diseases um, again, etiology was uh, what causes the disease. Um, I'm looking at that. So we have some diseases that we know very well. We know exactly what causes it. We know exactly um, the processes behind it, such as polio, Lyme disease, and tuberculosis. And we have others that are not completely understood. When we talked about viruses and how those cause cancer, that would be a very good example. And then there's other diseases. We still have no idea what's going on. So Alzheimer's disease, not a lot of clues as to what is going on or how um, it happens and occurs. Um, so more research is obviously needed there. Um, so we can um, look at diseases Again, not all of them are caused by microorganisms. You can have genetic diseases such as hemophilia, which is the people who do not clot their blood very well. And that's just because a mom and dad came together 
and had a child that had a genetic disorder. It's not 